Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. Thank you for joining us again. We are back on a weekly schedule and boy am I excited to show off this next episode. Previous episode, as you can see on the screen now, we completed this top tier corner of the harbour and I'm hoping today we're going to have the whole of the harbour pretty much mapped out and then we'll commence with bringing this area to life. And as always guys, thank you very much for your comments in the last episode. A lot of very nice comments made and a lot of questions as well, which we'll go over a bit later on in this episode. But as always guys, it's you that keeps this series going. Your support and your contribution to this really does help me achieve what I'm hoping to achieve with this. But anyway, moving on, this episode, episode 7, is all about the Monaco Yacht Club. If you haven't seen it before, it's a absolutely fantastic building and we have one built specially for Project Monaco, which we'll come across a bit later on. But here you can see on Google Maps, we are going to try and replicate this corner today. So it's all this section here, very different to the opposite side. There's a, a big hilled road going up the side of it and there's a lot of contours and a lot of different um, height terrains that we're going to have to really tackle in this episode. So it's going to be a very exciting one. We've got two more piers to lay down as well. The final ones from Mick Cross Hill. So they'll be going down and of course, they'll be coming on the workshop as well. Now I was hoping for this episode to be completed in one, but this whole stretch is quite a big stretch to complete in one episode. So it will be split into two. So we'll get the majority of things down today, but the detailing and the building placements, yes, we're gonna have some buildings very shortly, will be done in the next episode. But anyway, let's get on with it and we're going to start straight away by placing down the Yacht Club de Monaco. This is an outstanding model done by Senfcon and yes, you guessed it, the master of glass buildings, the master of all, has kindly recreated this fantastic Monaco building and boy does it look absolutely fantastic. It looks so real, it's going to be so good to, to detail and I can't wait to, to build anything else around it. As well as that, we have also got, as I said earlier, two more piers from Mick Cross Hill, and we're going to place those down pretty early in the episode because we want to get things moving. And these two will be detailed a bit later on. But Monaco Pier 1 and 2, again, will be on the workshop for you now. Um, so check that out. Make sure you download it. Place it in your city. Send us a screenshot. I want to see all of these screenshots of these Monaco assets in because, boy, have these creators worked hard to do so. They are absolutely amazing. And you also see earlier there was a flash up of the map overlay and going back to my original point earlier in the episode, a lot of people have been asking for a few tips on how to create a map overlay. And Mr Miyagi did create a very nice um, document on the uh, forum as well to show you how to do so. And I did promise him that I would do a video version as well. So keep an eye out for that, I'll be working on a um, tutorial on how to set up your map overlay with the help of course of Mr Miyagi's um, directions <laughs> because he has, he's the one that's worked it all out. I'm just going to show you how to do it visually. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway back to the episode here we are working on the tunnel and if you're a Formula 1 fan you'll recognize this tunnel a great deal. It's the main tunnel that takes you under in the Formula 1 Grand Prix, which is one of those very ionic sort of buildings, sorry, ionic tunnels. Now we're starting to work on some complicated um, junctions as well, and I didn't realise this before I started looking around in a bit more detail, but there are a lot of unusual um, sort of junctions and road, um, road layouts here in Monaco, and obviously that's down to the fact that, well, there's not much area to build on really. Um, things are very odd compared to countries that have a lot more flat areas and a lot of tunnels are used as well so it's going to be a very interesting um, mission to try and combine all of these tunnels up. I don't know if we're going to get everything exactly right but we can certainly make it look realistic and I want it to run, I want the traffic to run exactly how it does in real life with the one way streets etc. So that's going to be a challenge in itself and uh, this area here itself as well was quite a challenging one. Main reason being because we needed to have some one lane one lane roads going into sort of two or three. And as you know, 
when you use a movie, it doesn't always work out the best. And it's a bit of a, yeah, you got to play and tug with this really to try and make things work. So it does work out nice in the end. But by no means am I the best at creating junctions. There's a lot of other people who are on YouTube who do so. Check out Skibiff. Um, he does some great um, work on junctions and paints lines like anything. Um, but yeah, this worked out well. And again, you really do have to use the traffic president manager here, especially when you're creating these unusual junctions. Otherwise the traffic goes all over the place and it just doesn't run anything like what you want it to look like it's running. So definitely a mod that's worth getting if you're working on more complicated um, junction areas and it just makes life a lot easier when you're telling the traffic to do what you want it to do because we all know the traffic itself in City Skylines isn't the best in terms of its AI and intelligence but uh, you can certainly make it work. Now I wanted to start working on some of the terrain height as well. We've been quite lucky with the harbour area despite its detailing and some unusual areas. It's all been quite flat land. Um, so I really wanted to start creating this height in the um, area. Um, and the fact that some of these height in these areas are quite tight in terms of um, the way that the roads suddenly swoop up into different areas and the like it's going to be difficult i think to really get that working with the way that cities works but we can certainly work around it um and obviously move it tool really does help with that as well so that's going to be very useful things for us to continue using so here we are now on the roads just trying to get some of the heights going um if you see here now on the uh, top left hand corner you can see this area um and it does take a while to get used to how the um, terrain works um, I'm using a mixture of using some of the audience survey maps of Monaco and also just looking at screenshots and uh, Google Maps to really make sure that the heights are correct and using buildings for references as well um, I use the Monaco clubhouse itself as a reference point to how high this um, this first hill goes so it's definitely worth making sure that all those line up. Otherwise, you'll get to the top of the road and things won't quite work out too well. Now, I know we mentioned these last week, but these Monaco walls by Los Gecko have come at such a great time. It now means that we can use these walls to cover up the area that the, uh, the actual bridges, in this case, that I'm using don't cover up so this really does give that sense of height and a different height of terrain which works so well in this area a bit fiddly at times to really get these um these parts in because the road is quite an unusual shape um you have to make a few little different sections here um on the actual walls themselves but they do look absolutely amazing look at that they cover things up beautifully and after a while it does get a lot easier to use the uh, the Monaco walls and it just makes life easier. It just looks like it's meant to be like that. I know there are some people who are creating um, roads that now have these sort of sections underneath, but I just like this because it doesn't conform so much with the terrain as well. So we can get away with a nice look, but we're not hindering ourselves with the terrain itself as well.
so now that's that done there and you can see in the background it does take shape and it does look good we added in them arches as well which um, are there in real life so hopefully that will add it's obviously not a working arch it's uh, more of a, a a template over the top of the monaco walls but it does look good and we're now going to use a mod that i haven't actually shown on camera yet we're going to use the procedural object mod and my word it's a mod that really 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 does make your life so much better the ability to be able to modify change the shape move around actual assets and buildings is an absolute game changer it's one of those mods that i would consider as just as good as move it as you can see here what we're trying to do here is we're trying to move these monaco piers that mick crosshill made and make it into a ramp downwards so as you'd see what i did do is i used the standard ramp used the procedural object to actually change the um the well the direction of where the actual prop is moving so on the vertical line we moved it downwards so it was going not flat but down slightly a few degrees to create this off ramp so it's certainly a mod that takes a bit of time getting used to but when you are used to it it really does change everything and i'll use this a lot more um in monaco because it is such a versatile mod and it really does change the experience of your game and uh also doesn't add up to a million and one different props you could actually make a big surface area with just one block and it will save you on your um, prop limit as well which uh, a lot of us are always concerned with and i certainly am working on monaco here um but yeah it's certainly a mod that you really should check out and have a try and i'm thinking of doing a tutorial for this as well working alongside the creator simon so keep an eye out for that because it is certainly a mod that everyone should be using especially if you're a heavy detailer and want to create things that aren't quite possible um, as standard but anyway guys whilst we're watching the plantation process of this area here dropping down some of these plants with uh, the beautiful armestos planters i'm just going to ask you a few questions here about the project and the series itself just really want to know where you think we should build next we are waiting on a few assets but what i'm thinking is we really need to bring this area to life so as i mentioned last week the sort of schedule at the moment as far as i can see it is there'll be one more episode after this episode eight which will be the detailing of this harbor area which pretty much will clear up the whole of the harbour and it will be ready, ready to go. Episode after that, episode 9, that will be a interesting episode, I'm hoping. I'm going to really try and bring this area to life. So we're going to start placing down a few buildings. Um, I've got a few little tricks and little surprises for you when it comes to bringing this area to life. Um, we're going to be working a lot with the invisible pedestrian roads. We're also going to create a nice little ferry area as well. So bit of custom ferry work um, which will be interesting to, to get down and I really want to bring in this area and make it look realistic so that's the plan for episode 9 episode 10 I think what we'll plan to do is build out so we're going to try and work on some housing areas try and get some traffic in um, get a bit more people in the area just to bring the whole area to life and then beyond that we can pretty much go either or any direction we can carry on building the houses or what I'm interested in working on next, which I'm hoping you guys will as well, especially you F1 fans, is working on the area just behind where we're working here, which is where the big apartments are overhanging um, the cliffside with the what I'm going to call the Monaco Formula One tunnel that goes underneath it. So that's kind of where I see things progressing in the long term. Um, so let me know your thoughts. Um, I've also started up a Patreon page as well. Um, which will allow you to see videos a few days earlier than everyone else as soon as they're uploaded they're available for you guys um, and a few other little perks and that so check out my patreon page there's also going to be a lot of polls as well for people to give me their thoughts and feedback on what to do next and also if you want me to do any um, tutorials or anything you want me to show off um, that's also possible as a patreon so check out the page but anyway, back to the build. We're now just plantating this area. I'm going to use that word quite more, quite a bit more often, I think. Um, and just bringing this area to life. So you can see we put some um, chairs and 
umbrellas on top just to make it look um, more alive. And this is my favorite part of the whole, <laughs> whole episode, the lights. The lights on this building, sorry, the lights I'm putting onto this building really do look good. It brings this area to life. And if you look in real life, I'll pop a picture up as well. You can actually see that these are the color lights that are used um, to brighten up this area at night time. And it really does bring this area to life. It's surprising what lights do to your build, but in particular, this really does work well. And that is leading us off into the very end of episode seven. And we're gonna have a quick overview here. And as you can see, I've left it in nighttime view to really show off the, um, the ability that you can create with lighting on, on buildings. And I know this is a custom building just for Monaco, but lighting does really make a big impact on your build. So make sure when you are placing your lighting down, firstly, don't forget about it because nighttime views are one of the best. Um, so make sure you do that because they do really change the whole perspective um, of your build and make sure you show it off as well drop it into my discord channel or post it on Twitter and link me in it'd be great to see your nighttime shots as well but anyway here we go so as you can see everything placed down now we are starting to take shape the whole harbour now has the majority of what we need around it um, a few little detailing props here. I do like these little canoes as well. Um, and the little boat there just hanging off the edge of the, uh, the drop down area of Monaco. And I particularly like this area here as well. These um, little table and chairs on top of the pier really do look nice. And I like the use of these um, overhanging umbrellas as well. They look very modern and look very like something you'd see in Monaco. Not exact, but um, they really do take shape. And I am really happy with this area now. There's a lot, as you can see, down there of open and blank space, um, but they will be fulfilled next episode. And here we see one of the two fantastic piers. And I did place down the proper asphalt on top just to allow us to add decals, and it does. I like the adjustment it makes as well. And also the uh, two tier of the roads as well, with the, with the custom tunnel as well. Don't forget the custom tunnel, which <laughs> really does look good. Um, brings this area to life and you can kind of now start to imagine the height and the tiers that we're going to be creating in Monaco. We're going to build upwards very soon and it's going to really take shape. But on that note guys I'm going to leave you with the final cinematics which again do not miss they are beautiful. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Follow me as well. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Monaco has a long, long way to go, and I'm glad that you guys are on the journey. And it'll be great to pick up a few more along the way. So other than that, guys, I hope you all have a great weekend, and I will catch you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching, and all the best.